What is your view on <clears throat> ectopic pregnancies? Uh, that version of the life of the mother argument seems to be used around a lot. Yeah, so an, an ectopic pregnancy is a good question. So an ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy where the developing um, unborn human being is growing in a location other than the uterus, other than when where he or she is supposed to be growing. So sometimes the unborn can start to develop inside the fallopian tube, sometimes maybe even in the uh, ovary, or sometimes in the abdominal wall. And this presents a, uh, a life-threatening uh, situation where um, if you don't take some kind of action, then the, then the life of the mother will be in jeopardy. Because if the baby is allowed to continue to grow inside the fallopian tube, or say the abdominal cavity, or in the ovary, what's going to happen is that structure or area will, will rupture, uh, it'll cause infection and bleeding, and the mother will die. Okay. Now, this creates what's called a, a moral dilemma. Now, a moral dilemma is a very specific situation. Sometimes people think, well, is a moral dilemma just a, a decision, a, a tough decision? Like, you know, should I get a Whopper or should I get a Big Mac? Uh, I don't know. This is a moral dilemma. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. But no, no. But, but actually, a moral dilemma is not just a, a decision between two things, uh, or you know, two general things. Rather, a moral dilemma is where you have two competing obligations and uh, or or two de or one of, only one decision between two possible choices can be made, but both decisions result in an unwelcome outcome. So, for example, in the case of an atopic pregnancy, when the life of the mother is in jeopardy, if you do nothing, both mother and child will die. If you take action, that means you have to kill the unborn. You know, so so you see, both decisions are are unpleasant, unwelcome, there's something wrong with them. So this is what a moral dilemma is. Now, the way to resolve a moral dilemma uh, is to choose, make the decision that results in the greater good. Okay, so um, what is the greater good in this situation? Well, I believe in a situation where a woman is pregnant and it, she has an ectopic pregnancy and her life is in jeopardy, I believe the best decision is to take action, to um, do whatever medical things you got to do to, you know, remove the unborn, thereby, yes, killing the unborn, in order to save the life of the mother. And here's the reason why I offer that reasoning. I believe it's better that one should live, that one person should live, the mother, than two people should die, both mother and child. So we currently don't have the technology for us to take a child who's growing in the wrong part of the body and take them away from that and then implant them somewhere else. Like if we did, that would resolve this moral dilemma because then we could save both the mother and child. But currently we don't have the ability to save the life of the child. So um, what we must do then is at least save the life of one person, the mother. And that's why I think it's morally permissible in this case to take the life of the child in order to save the life of the mother. But again, we're not the, the child's going to die no matter what. We don't, have, so we're not. I think what ends up resulting is one person's living rather than doing nothing and having two people dead. Like just to give you a, a an analogy, if you're on a boat and two people are drowning, one on either side of the boat, you only have one life preserver. To do nothing results in both people drowning. But I believe you should choose. You should take action by throwing the life preserver out in order to save at least one person, because it's better that one should live and two should die. Now, some people say, oh, but Alan, I know there's some instances in where um, uh, a, a child can survive an ectopic pregnancy, or, you know, how could it be right to ever take the life of a unborn child? And uh, there are instances where I've heard of these kinds of things happening. I can't say that I've looked at all the details regarding that, but here's some, one thing I do know is that a lot of the evidence that we're dis discovering now is that in many cases when a woman has discovered that she is pregnant and has an ectopic pregnancy, by the time that's discovered, oftentimes the child has already died, the unborn's already died, because it can't survive in a fallopian tube, for example. And so um, 
uh, some of the doctors have told me that what they've had to do is just simply then just remove the remains of the unborn in order to save the life of the mother and stop her bleeding. So anyways, I, I know that there's some, I, I've heard of stories about things um, where they might survive. Um, I don't know if that's common, but uh, in general, um, I think if we're talking, if we're in a situation where we know the child's going to die no matter what, but we can save the life of the mother, I do believe in that instance, it's better that one should live and two, rather than two should die. Okay.